Hi, welcome to update number three of Painting Lab. It's been a busy week here, uh, not least of which because I've posted episode five on the channel where I show you into the beginning of the creation of this enormous portrait. So if you haven't seen that already, I would uh, suggest that you might want to check it out after watching this. Last week I talked about the intellectual academic side of the potential in this painting lab experiment. So this week I thought it might be appropriate to give you a slightly more personal take on why I'm so committed to painting and to everything painting lab. And to do that I'm going to take you back up to the house and um, there's a picture up there that I really want to show you. <sighs> okay. So now I'm gonna do something I promised myself I wouldn't do too much of on this channel, which is to sit in front of a painting and tell you what I think it is, or perhaps by implication, what you should think it is. But this painting means more to me than any acknowledged masterpiece or anything hanging on the walls of a national gallery or museum. And because of that, I really wanted to say something about it. It's not painted by anyone famous and it's not even that well painted when you get up close. In fact, it's pretty cack handed. It was painted in 1974 by my parents, actually, in the first six months of their relationship. My mum, who'd never painted a picture in her life, suddenly decided that she wanted to look at that view she'd grown up with outside of her bedroom window of the family farm and record it with her own hand rather than with a camera. Now, if my mum were with us today, she'd be telling us that there are all sorts of things she is one day going to go round and fix in this painting. Mistakes. In fact, some elements, like this elm tree here, have just been abandoned. But uh, to me, it is perfect as it is, as a record of how my parents were in those early years. My mum, full of determination and sometimes frustration and wild imagination, and my dad tenderly encouraging all of that. Really, I suppose what I'm trying to share with you is my attachment to this painting, despite the fact that it doesn't have any of the normal criteria by which you might judge quality, I suppose. So if a painting manages to stand as a record of how things used to be and uh, how somebody thought, I'd be willing to bet it does it, not because it's technically brilliant, but because it's totally sincere and sometimes full of love. So what else have I been up to here at Painting Lab in the last week? Well, the first thing I should tell you is I've been uh, finalising some of the details of our box design, our packaging. And also this week I've been in fairly regular contact with James Gurney. Uh, James is one of the most popular painting tutors on YouTube. If you haven't seen his channel, go and check it out. It's really worthwhile. James has tried the comparator mirror that I sent to him and his first reaction to it was so positive that he's going to feature us on his channel. This is his first comparator mirror painting. And this is what he said about it. It was a remarkable experience, quite different from using a lucigraph, a camera lucida, or a grid system, which I explain in episode five. With those other copying and tracing methods, I have the feeling that I have to paint inside the lines and that I, if I cover over those lines, I might lose touch with the intricacies of the photo I'm working from. But with the comparison mirror, I feel free to paint in a more carefree way because I always have the photo as a net to catch me. So it's funny, but James's response is very, very similar to the response of many non-painters who've tried the device, that rather than feeling hemmed in 
or that they're using a cheat of some kind. The comparator mirror just puts them in the right zone to be able to make a painting for themselves. So collaborations like this, and I'll be announcing more of them in the months to come, will be part of what drives Painting Lab forward. But of course, the real lifeblood of this, and I say this in every video, is your direct involvement in a new way to draw and paint. We want to do for art what the calculator did for mathematics. We want to turn viewers like you. I'm quite astounded by it. Into doers. <laughs> The way that the shapes have come together to create an actual face is like magic being revealed hmm. and understanding how something is done. So if you want to become part of this, you can go to paintinglab.com and you can sign up to our mailing list. And that means that you will be part of this experiment and amongst the first to hear when Tim Jennison, the original inventor of the comparator mirror and myself, release our comparator mirror glimpse. So until next week, good luck with your attempts to discover creative confidence through drawing and painting. And I will see you next week. <laughs>